we've seen in the past that we can create variables in memory that act as containers and may contain a value and we declare the variables as a holding a specific data type uh, which relates both to the, uh, the type of data that's going to store but also how much size it needs. And so in this example I'm, I'm creating two variables those integer variables x and y and in our first statement both in bb and c sharp we have initialized the value of x to 15. We can then execute our third line of the code here, which places 9 into the variable of y. And then the fourth line, if I put 21 into x, that value of 15 is replace. So a variable can only contain one value. In both C sharp and VB, we have another type of container called an array. And you can think of an array as a variable that, that may contain multiple values. And in declaring our array, we use the dim statement in VB. And instead of just declaring XYZ as an integer variable, we're declaring XYZ as an array by putting a set of parentheses and an index number, an upper index number, in those parentheses. In this case, it's five. And that's going to create, in essence, six spaces in memory for integer values. And we'll refer to those as index numbers, just like we did with list boxes. And so the first one would be XYZ0, or sometimes referred to as sub-0, XYZ sub-1, XYZ sub-2, and the last one's XYZ sub-5. Doing the same thing in C-sharp, we put a pair of empty square brackets behind the data type, and then we set that variable XYZ or that array name equal to a new object of type int holding six values. So here the number between the, the brackets is the number of, of elements. So it's going to go from zero to five. Whereas in VB, the number between the parentheses is the upper uh, element. In this case, they both create six spaces for integer values. I can place a value inside one of those spaces by referring to the element inside parentheses in VB or inside square brackets uh, within C sharp. So XYZ sub 0 equals 12. It's going to store a value of 12 in the memory location of element 0 of our array named XYZ. Same thing here. I'm storing the value of 6 inside element 1 of XYZ. And then we can go ahead and store the other four elements, 14, 17, 8, and 11. So we've now populated our array with all six values. And then if I want to get the information stored in memory in an array, I can simply refer to the element. So here we have x equals xyz sub 4, that's a value of 8, times xyz sub 0, or element 0, it's a value of 12, and so x is going to equal 96, 8 times 12. And that's what is displayed in the message box. If, however, I were to try to place a value in the xyz element 8, I would get an error. And the error would be because I'm outside of the range of index numbers. We only declared 6 elements. So when designing our arrays, we need to know how many elements are going to be stored. In VB, there's a statement called redim, to let me redimension an array and add elements or subtract elements from the array. It's a little more difficult to do that in C sharp. So if you know how many elements you're going to have ahead of time, that's the ideal in which we can define the size of our array. So in the previous example, we declared our array as, hold, as an integer array holding six values, and then we had six lines that, that populated that array. We can also declare and initialize an array all on, in one statement. So in VB, I have dim XYZ, my set of parentheses. Notice it's empty. There's no value inside the parentheses. This is called a dynamic array. As integer equals, and then inside of curly brackets, I place my six values separated by commas. VB will read that information and recognize that it needs to create XYZ as an array of six elements and populates that, el that array with those six values. Same thing in C-sharp. 
using a pair of empty uh, square brackets after my new int. And uh, then again in curly, bra curly braces, we're specifying our six values that are separated by commas. In those two statements, we need to replace the seven statements in the previous example. If I wanted to do that with string values, I would need to place each value inside of quotes and separate them with commas. So here we have a string array of last names that's going to have four values. And then in extracting that information, I'm going to use a message box and I want to get last name sub two or my third element, element two, which is going to be the value of Williams. And that's what's displayed in the message box. Remember, we always start counting with zero as far as our index numbers. More often than not, we're going to read values in from a data file and populate an array with the data from the data file. So here's an example where I'm going to read in a series of numbers that are stored in a text file called grades.txt. I may not know how many numbers there are, so in this case I'm going to read my data first and use a dialog box to get the file, open the file, and then I'm going to read the data in and I'm simply going to count how many lines of data there that exist in that file. That's going to give me a value that I can then use to declare my array. So I'm going to dim scores, that's the name of my array, as records minus one. I'm going to start counting with zero, so I'm going to subtract one. It's going to hold integer values. And I've closed my data file earlier. Now I'm going to reopen it again and read it a second time. And this time I'm going to use a loop and I'm going to populate each element of the array based on my counter of i with the next line read from the data. And the result is I would get an array of however many lines are in this data file and each element would have one of the values from that data file. And I then close my data file. Doing the same thing over here in C Sharp. First of all, we're we're reading the, the data once to determine how many elements there are, how many lines there are. Then we're going to declare our array accordingly. And then read the data from the, the data file into the array and populate it. Having read that data in, we can now work with large amounts of data using arrays very simply. So here I want to get the average score of all of those uh, integers and the high value and the low value. And I can very easily do that within a for loop where I'm reading each of the values inside of that array and simply tracking the total, which I'll then use to, to calculate the average, and then also comparing the values to find the high value and the low value. Now the nice thing about this, it doesn't matter whether I have 10 elements in my array or a thousand elements in my array. I don't have to change my code at all because I'm simply looking at the length of scores. The size of my array is what I'm using as my condition inside this for loop. So arrays are extremely powerful in working with large amounts of data. The array class has a method for sorting the data inside the array for us. And this works on one-dimensional arrays. And all I need to do is declare array.sort and pass inside the parentheses the name of my array. I've taken that data that we brought in from our text file. And I first wrote a little for loop here that creates a message box of all that data, comma, separated uh, in its unsorted state. And then in this highlighted line, I sorted the array using array.sort and then created another message box looking at each of those values by the index numbers from 1 to scores.length minus 1 and then displayed that prompt in a message box and you can see the data now is sorted from low to high. So it's very simple to sort data uh, in an array using array.sort and if we had a fair list of last names it would sort it alphabetically from A to Z.